Dr. Matthews, bishop, my bishop. He's my, also is my neighbor. He lives in, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, in Mississippi, down there by, by Memphis. Uh, what is that? My, I'm trying to remember the, the, the exact name. Uh, South Haven. South Haven, yeah. South Haven, Mississippi. God bless you, brother. Take over. Uh, thank you, my brother. San Bonani. It's so good to be here on today. I'm honored to be here. And thank you, my brother, for having me here. I've been so blessed, blessed by the words of my sister uh, Itang just a moment ago. I'm just excited to be here on this day of, of intercession for the world. And um, Praise God. It, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yes, um, he's right. I lived in, 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 in Joburg, in Nikasi, was right in Tembisa. My church is in Tembisa, Ivory Park, and Tembisa Tabernacle Church. And now I'm back in the States. We were there from 2004 to 2016. Uh, my family and I, my wife and my children, I had two children born there. So they're South African American. But uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm blessed to be here on today. And uh, I just want to start first with a word of prayer. I have been assigned to pray as well as to uh, share a bit of message and to pray, because today is a, a specific day of intercession. And first, I just want to begin to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we bless your name even right now, oh God. We thank you for these brothers and sisters who have gathered together to seek you. You are our source. Our resources may dry up. We may have challenges, but you Oh, Lord, our, our source. And so I ask that even right now, I'm not intelligent enough. I'm not articulate enough. I don't know enough to speak to these great people. Um, but I ask, so at this point, I ask that I not say another word and that you speak a rhema prophetic word through me on today and that we might be shaken. I'm speaking to leaders from every sphere of society. And as I speak to these leaders, may they lead your people for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give you glory. Amen. Once again, I, um, Diabolisa and Gamalika Jesu Cristo. I'm so happy for what God is doing on today. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to be here. And my task today, as my sister was sharing on the youth, that I'm sharing to leadership and also pray for healing and hope. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as you are leaders gathered here on today, one thing is for sure we are in some challenging times. They were kind of outlined by my sister a moment ago. Um, not only COVID, but first of all, uh, COVID is not the first pandemic. There's about five pandemics on top of the pandemic of COVID. Uh, we are still languishing in the pandemic of HIV. We're still languishing in the pandemic of, 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 uh, uh, of diabetes and, and all types of pandemics that are on top of this pandemic. And in the top, and on, and in addition to that, I will say to you, my brothers and sisters, I am not that preacher to tell you that now that we've crossed over in the Chronos, my sister just quoted from Galatians six verse nine, uh, and says, "If you uh, that in due, you season, in due season we'll reap if we faint not." Uh, yeah, that due is season is Cairo. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, that due season is the Kairos. And I'm not that preacher to tell you because we've crossed over in a chronos, the, what's on the watch, what's, what's on the calendar, uh, what we see, because it's a new year that everything behind is dead and it's going to be a great year and everything is going to be okay. No, there are going to be challenges this year. Our challenges will intensify. Maybe they have a vaccine, maybe it'll work and maybe everything will be okay from a COVID perspective, but as the body of Christ, uh, the challenges that we face literally around the world. Sister mentioned Nigeria, what's happening in Nigeria, what's happening uh, with Boko Haram, what's happening with Al-Shabaab, what's happening uh, in India, what's happening in, in, in Myanmar uh, and many other places around the world. There are challenges in the body of Christ, no less of the anti-Christ, anti-God policies of America, which is turned away from God and is against the church and against, uh, against true Christianity. It is our time, my brothers and sisters, that we must prepare for battle and prepare for combat on this year. There's no time for us to be weak and soft. And so I share with you, um, just in this few minutes that I have, to encourage you from a familiar passage of scripture that you know, that you know by memory, but I'm gonna read it to you for a moment out of the New King James, New King James Version of the Bible. That's in um, 
2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 6, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, that we are armed and we're dangerous. And when we recognize that we are armed and dangerous, we're not hopeless, we're not hapless, we cannot succumb to uh, the things of this world and feel like we can't make it, that God has not abandoned us, he has armed us, we are dangerous, and that his kingdom, that from his kingdom agenda that begins from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when he told Adam, I have given you dominion, that is the original plan, and it continues this day through Jesus. Don't have time to go through all of that, but it, go, it continues to this day through Jesus Christ, and we, we seek that he seeks to rule and reign this earth through us even right now. Yeah, we have, we're armed and dangerous. We have the warfare of the kingdom and it is mighty. Our, the warfare that we have is not, the, the weapons we have is not the weapons of this world, but we have mighty weapons that will pull down strongholds. Strongholds, not only in the minds of individuals, strongholds in the hearts of individuals. We're living in a time where suicide has more than doubled across the United States and in many places around the world. We live in a time of spikes in violence, we live in a time of spikes in addiction, we live in a time where witchcraft is intensifying in the United States and other places around the world, boldly being presented, boldly being uh, 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 accepted and, and walked upon. But I'm here to tell you that we have the power to break down strongholds and to cast down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Yes, it's important for us not only to worship God with our hearts and our souls, but also with our minds, that there are intellectual reasons for our faith. Our faith is not a blind faith, but we need to apologetically uh, defend the faith that we have in Jesus Christ and to touch the minds of individuals. It is scientific from, from a physics, chemistry, anthropology, archaeology, um, astronomy, all point to the cross, all point to God, all point to the power of God. There is no dichotomy between science and God. The laws of science stream our creator, the very language of our DNA, the very power of our cells and our body, the very greatness of our cosmos that is before us screams of the power of our creation. Hallelujah. And so I say to you even right now, I say to you even right now that as the power of our universe, to everything screams that there is a creator, that there is a God who is the God of the Bible. As we read the Bible and science continues to catch up, history continues to catch up to what the Bible is saying, we must cast down every uh, argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It says in the last days that people will be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. But it'll be up to us not to cower, not to worry about offending, but to be bold enough to proclaim Christ. That means we gotta study we got to understand the roots of our Christianity. We got to understand that, oh, from day one, that the Bible has always said it's not misogynistic, it is not racist, that from day one, the scripture has said that every tribe, every people, every nation, every uh, tongue will stand before God in, in peace. And so as we do that, I pray for you as leaders that the power of God will be upon you, that you will be those bold warriors to stand and that we will break down every demonic force that comes to hinder, every spirit that is not like God that will come to hinder. Yes. Yes, we must be ready to punish the enemy in fighting. The enemy has not rested. The enemy has not sheltered in place. The enemy is moving uh, 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 at a torrid pace. So yes. you and I, my brothers and sisters, must move with due haste, must move with a sense of urgency and recognize that the kingdom of heaven is indeed at hand. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are on this line. And I speak even right now in the name of Jesus, break down every stronghold through us, break down every high thing, every argument that comes against the knowledge of you and we rebuke every demonic force, every demonic force in the hearts and minds of individuals, 
every demonic force in institutions, such as police stations, uh, the, the hospitals, such as the schools and other every area and in, in, in the regions that we live in and the regions that we pray for. We pray for the nations in the name of Jesus. Satan will not uh, have victory because you have given us victory. We rebuke every demonic force and speak even right now that even in this time of prayer and intercession, that you will show yourself. Father, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but we take it by force. We demand that our children will be free. Our generations will be free. Our nations will be free and that they will see your light. And as your light shines, you will break the strongholds of poverty, of, of, of mental uh, uh, oppression. You'll break the strongholds of all types of things that in governments, in corruption, and all the things that are seeking to destroy the people of God. Your word reminds us that the thief comes not but to steal to kill and destroy and we see this theft we see this uh this this murder and destruction at a high level even right now but but we thank god that we have hope because you said but i came that we, they might have life and that more abundant so we thank you oh god for the abundant life in the name of jesus we bless you we praise you and we claim the victory and it is so in jesus name i want to encourage you my brothers and sisters no oh, we walk in the victory don't repeat what the world is saying don't look from the world's perspective don't look from their perspective when anxiety comes rebuke it in the name of jesus oh i will not walk in anxiety and fear i will not walk and oppression and depression. It is not your oppression. It is not your OCD. It is a demonic attack rejected even right now in Jesus name. And the scripture tells us in Romans chapter eight, verse 18, it says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. Seek the glory of God. Let the glory of God manifest itself in your life. And I can't mention Romans 8.18 without showing you Romans 8.19. Then it says, for the entire creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The entire world is waiting on us to walk in the authority that God has originally gave, given us in Jesus. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Walk in that authority. Walk in that power. Recognize that the one who is in you is greater than anything that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's no hopelessness. It doesn't matter what happens. Oh, the Lord is with you. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. You will fear no COVID. You will fear no Tootsie. You will fear no one. You will fear no evil. You will fear no... Why? Because he is with you. Walk with God. Famba no shikwembu. Hallelujah. God bless you all.